Welcome back to the news at 10. Let's go live now to Oka, where our political correspondent, Shemo Kimbalo, is standing by to speak to the governor-elect of Anambra State, Willie Obiano, his first interview since the election. Hi, Shemo. Thank you so much and welcome to Anambra State. We are now being joined on the news at 10 by the governor of Anambra State and the winner of the Anambra State Governorship Election 2017, Governor Willie Obiano. Many thanks for joining us on the news at 10. And I must say congratulations on your victory today. Thank you, Cheryl. You've won in 21 local government areas of 21 local government areas of Anambra State. How does that make you feel? Well, first, I thank God the Almighty for, for making this possible, this uh, overwhelming endorsement by Indianambra that I should uh, move on with uh, what I'm doing for them. Uh, like you, knew, you know very well, uh, uh, before I came in, security was an issue. I came, I saw, I conquered, you know, and uh, it's not a static thing. Security is continuous, so we are moving and we are going to put in uh, more effort to ensure that the next four years is even far better than they've seen it now. Uh, I'll keep awake so that all Anambra people or, and people that are living in Anambra, you know, uh, sleep with their two eyes closed, you know. You've embarked on some projects which yeah. a lot of people believe that uh, are quite ambitious yes. in the midst of uh, austerity or uh, call it economic recession that we have, we have faced. I mean, going into, a lot of people, uh, your critics have said, you're just doing this uh, as uh, a, uh, just a, a window dressing to gain uh, victory. Going into the, your, your four, in another four years that you have been given a mandate, what's going to be your priority? Well, I, um, I, I, I wouldn't know what they, they are referring to. Uh, if it's the airport, uh, the airport is going to go properly uh, because... Uh, Anambra is not bringing a cover in investments. It's a build, operate, manage, and transfer approach that we did with the, with the Chinese uh, company, uh, funded by Exim Bank. You know, and um, they are on ground. They are trying to push some, uh, 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 you know, some um, guarantee to support uh, some of the funding that they are, initial funding they will get. So I'm quite confident about that, you know. I'm only facilitating that using my banking background. I'm not putting a cobble in there, you know, but I'm directing them and moving them in a direction that will make Anambra better. But we have greater projects that we're doing. Uh, things I'm doing in agriculture is fantastic, and we're going to, in the next four years, progress it. One of the things that won me accolade amongst all the local governments, uh, basically, was choose your project community project, 40 million per community. The all communities are choosing their second project now. It has never happened in the history of Nigeria anywhere at all. You know, every community, you know, even the remotest place in Anambra, which is Olumbanasa, very close to Kogi, you know, benefited from that choose your project community. Apart from the schools we built for them, they now got the money. And we are trying to do a bridge for them, roads and what have you. You know, in the you made a point in the era of recession you know, when monies are trickling, uh, you know, what do we do? Uh, I've reassured Nyanambra that uh, I'm going to increase IGR without increasing taxes. And how do I do it? First, but how many percentage do you, do you hope to do that? Well, significantly, I've done over 300 percent already. So you are hoping to do how many percent more? No, we were basically, uh, I want to be, uh, first I started with 350 million per month. Now I'm about 1.7, hovering around that. I million? Want to, yes, uh, yeah, 1.7 billion. I want to be at uh, 2.8, sorry, 2.5 billion, so I can manage my uh, uh, recurrent expenditures properly. And now forget about uh, federal funding every month, you know. But what we have so far does help me to pay salaries as and when due, even when uh, the federal government hasn't paid me fact. I'm always I have a, a buffer to, to be able to address that. And the civil servants in the state will continue to enjoy all those uh, privilege, uh, opportunities that they've gotten so far. And they've shown it in this election. 
I believe they came out very massively to support this initiative. This is a common trait with a lot of uh, governors or executives who get a second term, a second shot at uh, governing the people. And what happens is that they drop the ball and they slow down. So if there is one thing that is of emergency that you want to do for uh, in your program for the people of Anambra, what would that be? Well, Shiro, I'm not going to drop the ball. My eyes are on the ball. Uh, my, I'm working hard to ensure that at the end of my eight years, governors coming after me will not have to depend on a FAC to run the state. And that's what I'm doing in investment. Security is the greatest thing that I've done and it's bringing a lot of people in. Let me give you an example, Shiro. Uh, every month, the Anambra people that come into Anambra to celebrate weddings, church activities, name them in deluge we've estimated that they bring in uh, one point or oh, about one million uh, one billion naira monthly into an umbra and this trickle down to the cab drivers taxi drivers and what have you then they choose your project uh, 40 million per community we're going to do that for each of the next four years and that means in my end of my eight years they would have gotten 200 million each per community. per community and that would have gone uh, very far in uh, developing that community that means they will have in the next four years eight projects plus the two they have now ten projects so you can imagine showing your village you have eight pro projects by the government apart from the roads that are coming there the water the electricity we are bringing that's uh, that's a lot of development you've not told me about that one thing that is urgent that you want to do for the people of an amber state uh, as you kickstart the, your next four years uh, no, my, the greatest thing that we want to do is to uh, emulate what israelis have done we have very rich anambra people all over the world anambra made lagos what it is really whether they want to accept it or not uh, <laughs> the taxes that are paid are mostly by anambra people you know the development that is going there the houses that are when they, come on a lot of things that are happening there and the same all over the place but none in this artist. Why? First, no security then. Now we've gotten security. So my pre I'm emphasizing that this is time to come home and invest. You know, and we are giving them, by the way, we have reduced our challenges on investment to almost zero. Anambra now is the easiest place to come for investment because you sit in a one-stop shop investment outfit called Ansipa. Anambra State Investment and Promotion and Protection Agency, mm. headed by a banker and many bankers. You know, from there, you know, you get things sorted out in an hour or two, and you get your CFO in two weeks if, if your case is good. If, not, if your case is not good, they help you build it or they cancel it as the case may be. And so we, we're doing so, many, so much things. But this, this second administration will touch the lives of uh, the less privileged, they touch the lives of the common man in the streets. Who voted for me? It will also touch the lives of the big people All right. whose industries will employ uh, the young ones that we are bringing. Before we wrap up this conversation, yes. uh, Governor Obiano, uh, you are the only governor of APCA, the All Progressive Ground Alliance. Yes. Are you under immense pressure? Not at all. We, this victory will have a permanent effect. You know, a permanent, put it in water, ripple effect. Yes. A permanent effect on the southeast. Uh, we are you hoping to win more states? We are going to win all the southeast. Do you have that resource? I, I moved down to the south. Uh, you, you saw how uh, nobody has won 21 over 21. It's got 100 percent. It was a full endorsement by the people. It, you know, it, I was returned unopposed. That's the word. Unopposed. That's the word. And it, ha it hasn't happened in the history, despite all the campaign of calumny by funny people all over the place. You know, but we won the same thing will happen there and from there we do like the Eurobus did they started from lagos ad won some of this uh, the south uh, the, the the states in the west now from the block to be able to negotiate with the center that's 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 All our right. strategy and we can achieve that with ease governor william viano uh, winning again uh, as a governor of uh, an Amber state a second time Many thanks uh, for your time on the program. And I must say, congratulations. Uh, yeah, again. yeah, thank you, Sean. Let me thank, <laughs> greet you. This is how you greet him. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you, Sean. Thank uh, you so much. Thank well you done. so much. Thank Appreciate you, it. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you, Sean. And that's it well from Anambra State. It's well back done. to you now. On the thank, you. Of 10. thank you. Thanks a lot, Sean.
Back here in Lagos uh, to the arts. October Rain is an exhibition by the Lagos chapter of the Society of Nigerian Artists. The event, 10th in the series, displays the dexterity of Nigerian artists from sculpture to paintings. And that's on Art Review tonight. It's a journey that started in 2007 at the same venue, the National Museum in Lagos. Ten years after, at the 19th annual Juried Art Show, the flow of colors and precise chiseled wonders interface at the October Rain Exhibition, and only the best made the cut. October Rain Exhibition is uh, put together by the Society of Nigerian Artists, Lagos State Chapter, to house the artists, particularly the productive ones. It's an exercise I mean, that um, is formed to evaluate uh, the productivity of the artists, particularly from Lagos State. And uh, it has actually worked out in the areas of uh, the artists bringing in new things into uh, the art landscape. And um, it's quite innovative. Before we choose the artists, we send out a call for entry and people put in for the show. So after that, we do the jury. So we actually set a panel of jury that did that, not from the committee. And they look at the quality of works, they look at the strength and the, the content also of the art piece before they can choose the work. Exhibition which bridges a generation gap sees old and young artists of the society in one room. The sheer breath of creativity takes some of the pioneers down memory lane. Then we founded the Society of Nigerian Artists in 1963. We are only three of us started it. Grillo, Anambra Akwaya and myself started it. Then we brought in more people and more people. And at our best we were about 17 in the whole of Lagos at that time. But now you can see our children and grandchildren in big, in high numbers. And they are doing very well. I'm happy about it. There's also a man who is a key part of this event and made a big impression on the hearts of many artists, whether they knew him up close and personal or not. Chief Rashid Badamasi, a pleasant uh, man, very distinguished, and also a philanthropist, a lover of the arts, specifically visual arts, painting, and uh, a friend of mine, a friend of mine. The Lagos State Chapter of the Society of Nigerian Artists was established in 1981. It's a professional body for all practicing visual artists with branches across the country. Ahead on the news at 10, David Moyes' West Ham United's reign starts with defeat at Watford in the English Premier League. Stay with us, sit on Sports News.